Hi, I'm Keith Toprud, one of the lawyers at Scott Toprud McCarty in Great Falls, Montana. I'm sitting here today with Dan Vukovic, a CPA and valuation specialist with Anderson Zermillan, based here in Great Falls. Dan, welcome. Good to be here, Keith. Dan, you and I, well, we've known each other for quite a while, and we've done a number of matters together, and I thought it would be really useful for our clients just to find out a little bit more from your side some of the issues that we're dealing with in planning, business planning and estate planning, because you you bring you wear two hats. You're a CPA and you deal with all the income tax issues and the planning issues there, but you're also a valuation specialist. And that's that, correct, yeah. That, and that's a powerful duo. Well, first of all, would you mind just giving us a little background on yourself? Where are you from, so on? Okay. Yeah, I'm uh, originally from Anaconda. Uh, went to the school at the University of Montana in Missoula. I graduated from there, went to work for Hamilton Misfelt up in our Haver office at the time. Spent a couple years in Haver, then transferred down to our Great Falls office. Uh, worked there, became a shareholder uh, probably about seven years into my career with the company. I've been at it for about 38 years now, and so. Uh, See, seen a lot, been around a lot, and as I went along, I did get my CPA, uh, got into working legal matters and other items, and decided I'd go after some other designations. One of them being an ABV, it's Credited in Business Valuation by the AICPA. I also am certified in financial forensics that I use in the litigation world uh, when I do some of the work in that area. Okay, well, let's not go the litigation route. Okay. That's where we try to stay away from okay. in my, my line of work, as, yeah. as you know. Well, let's start off talking a little bit more about the business, the income tax, state tax, the, the CPA side, side of your work. What kind of clients are you you're finding yourself mostly working with? Well, in the Great Falls office, uh, work a lot with the ag community. Uh, a lot of farm and ranch clients, a lot of small businesses. Do a, do a lot of, of that type of work, um, a lot of tax work. I will also do consulting with businesses if they're looking to tweak their business or do type that type of work. Work in the estate and gift side um, from valuation perspective and also tax planning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, thinking about our session today, I was thinking about some of the matters that you and I have worked on in, in recent past, and I'm thinking of one of them involving a ranch family uh, out east of town that everything was going great, but mom and dad are thinking, you know, when we're gone, not so sure the kids are gonna wanna keep this operation together. We've got one side of the family that really is interested in the cattle business and the other side, the grain business. So we worked with the family for a while trying to sort that out. What, how, do you, how, do you, how does your work fit into that kind of planning or what, what are you bringing to the table in that kind of work? Well, and again, I think what I really appreciate working with you, Keith, is you realize this is a team effort. It, you, you bring the legal expertise to the table. From my perspective, I come in with the tax and the entity structure to discuss how that would all work. And so I think those are the big things that I see in the in the client we were the mutual client we were working on in that situation you're absolutely right you had to have the dichotomy of this group wanting to do one thing and then there's another but and they already had multiple entities which is very common today with the farm and ranch clients they have multiple entities that they're operating under so it was how do we split this up how do we make that work the valuation work that needs to go into that, the tax planning that has to go into that, and again, the legal setup of how that all comes together. Yeah, well, that was an interesting matter and great clients, and I, I like to think we did some good for, yeah. the, for the family. Yeah. Uh, and then you and I were just chatting about another farm ranch family, more ranching family, where we're gonna probably be meeting very shortly with the, with the senior generation. Uh, Number one, I, as I was thinking about that matter, I've been working with you now, I don't know, four or five years, or maybe more than that on yeah, that matter, so. and I feel like I've got a really great relationship with the clients, but boy, do they have a lot of respect for you, and your relationship with them is just really central to the, the way they not only operate now, but their plans for the future, 
it's great, as you say, to work on a team where you bring that depth of knowledge about their circumstances, but also that close relationship where you're able to bring ideas to the table. They'll listen, first of all, very closely. And if it makes sense, they're liable to follow that. And that's, that's not always true in the planning world, is it? Um, not always. <laughs> and then the client you're, you're referring to, yes, we do have a very close relationship. I've, it's cultivated over years of me providing services, listening to what they have to say, and then giving them some recommendations. And, and I really do enjoy those type of relationships where, I, where we are working together. And it really works out well on the planning side because I get to know them. I get to understand what their, their desires are because as we sit in and work with you, that's always what I keep going back to. This is what you want to do and we're gonna to try to get there, but we gotta figure out how to get there. There's different roads and we wanna figure it out. So knowing their family, knowing what their goals and what they want to achieve by, by their planning is always important. Yeah, it is. Well, so here we are mid 2020. It's an election year. Uh, we've got this COVID crisis, which I don't think we'll even go into that too much unless you want to. But if you're maybe talking to farmers and ranchers or wanting to maybe put a, a bug in their ear to be thinking about their planning, are there any ideas that you'd want to mention today that farmers and ranchers might want to be thinking about at this time? Well, you know, it's a great question in, in that when you sit down and you look at what's going on in the world today, how things shift, how quickly they can shift. We, we always talk about when there's changes in the tax law, we, we have to do our planning under that umbrella. But we also have to try to pull out the crystal ball and say, what could happen down the road and try to plan for that. And that's very difficult. Um, as you pointed out, it's an election year. If there was a change in how um, the you know parties at the top right now, there could be some changes in the tax law as a result. And so planning for those type of things is crucial to be nimble because you're gonna probably have, if a new uh, administration were to come in, it will take a while. It's not gonna be overnight that there'd be changes. So. You have to be your ear to the ground, what's coming down the road, and then how do you be able to maneuver when those things come along? Yeah. So th those are important from that aspect. Yeah, yeah. Well, so we're talking about, we got your hat on now as the CPA. Will you maybe put that hat to the side and put on your valuation specialist hat? Because um, in my work, valuation issues come up very often. And there aren't that many people who are as well qualified as you are to do the valuation work, uh, in my experience. Mm -hmm. So it's you're a you're kind of a a resource that's highly valuable, and uh, you bring a lot of a lot to the table. So we're talking about a valuation that you would be involved in. First of all, what are you valuing? I'm assuming you're not trying to value jewelry or something like that. What do you value in your work? Yeah, the valuation work I do is business interest. And so when I say business interest, um, the situation may be you, the client may have a corporation where they're a shareholder. They could be a 100% shareholder, they could be a 1% shareholder. And so what we're valuing is their shareholder interest, which can be totally different than a value for 100% of the business. And so we're looking at those aspects of it when we're doing that. I don't value real estate. I don't value equipment. Um, I'll normally in the valuation, I'll need some help in that area from somebody to give me those value of the assets. But we're then taking it to the next step of saying, what is the business interest worth that may only own an interest in this corporation that actually owns the assets? So we go down that road. Yeah, and I think I know the answer to this but does the way the business entity is set up, the controlling legal documents, have an effect on your valuation? It's a big effect on it. It's, it's actually huge because it's one of the first things we ask for because most people don't understand if you have bylaws that have restrictions in there um, to ownership and the transfer of ownership, what you can do. 
whether you're a controlling owner or whether you're a minority owner will also come into play in those documents. And so those documents are crucial. So we're always looking for where the incorporation papers, are there any shareholder agreements, which I'm a firm believer in shareholder agreements. And again, I turn to, to you and your specialty to say, you know, work those up. And I know you, you believe in those too. So, um, you know, those are very important aspects of the valuation process. Yeah. So let's say you're valuing a farm and ranch or a business in town. There are different kinds of valuations that you would do. Isn't that right? Yeah, we, we normally have three levels of valuation services we provide. Um, the first level we, we refer to as an indication of value or a hypothetical sale value. And that's more of those people that just want to say, I, I just want to get an idea of what this is worth. And what we're doing there is we're going to take your financial information. We're going to spread that. We're going to try to find some market information about your business um, and then come up with a just a ballpark number. And a lot of it, we're going to come back to the owner of that interest and say, we need you to make some of the final decisions on what we're, how we're going to ter- determine this value. That's an indication of value or a hypothetical sale. The next level is called a calculation of value. And there is standards that we must follow when we do valuations. And so in that process, uh, one of the aspects of a calculation of value is, is we say we, when I say we, the individual that is hiring us and, and myself will agree upon how we're gonna come up with the value. And we're going to go through that calculation process together. Um, we're, we will, pretend, we, in most cases in a calculation value, we're going to ignore certain aspects of the next level of valuation that I'm going to talk about. And that would be a conclusion or an opinion of value where we're being asked to provide a value, in our opinion, what do we think this, this business interest is worth? Normally, when we're doing those type of valuations, it's either for a legal situation, an estate, um, if someone passes away and they need it for estate tax purposes, or if they're going to be gifting their interest, that's taking it up to the next level. And as you go up those levels, the work that we do continues to build off each other and increases as we go up those. Yeah, you know, one thing that it comes up pretty often in my discussions with clients, when we're talking about valuation, this idea that we've got one, let's say one business, and it can be worth different amounts depending, for instance, on who the buyer is. And the people just kind of scratch their heads about that. Would you, could you talk a little bit about that, Dan? Yeah, it, it is an interesting aspect of the valuation because when, when somebody comes to you and says, what's my business worth? I'm gonna come back with more questions. I'm not gonna come with, here's the, here's the answer to that. I'm gonna say, what are you using it for? Um, and do you have prospective buyers to look at it? The most common uh, phrase we hear in valuation is fair market value. And fair market value is, is actually defined as a hypothetical buyer, hypothetical seller, neither, both knowing all the facts and circumstances about the business, what would they, the buyer be willing to pay the seller for that business? And when we use that phrase hypothetical, that's very important because it is basically saying we're just going to throw it out on the open market and and we don't have an identifiable buyer in this situation um, so we come up with that value to say if you just try to put it on the market what's the fair market value going to be we have what is known as um, a strategic value or a specific uh, buyer type of arrangement and the example i normally provide is I have an engineer firm that that the engineering company wants it valued, and they know the other. It's another engineering firm very interested in buying them, and there's this synergy that if one if that engineering and the engineering company I'm working with is a they specialize in highway jobs and airport jobs. Well, this other engineering firm may be a civil engineering company. And if they put the two together, they've opened up new markets for both of them. So there's this additional synergy value that may be there that actually would boost the value up over a fair market value. So it's the same interest, but I can have different values for them. Yeah. So, well, that's why we pay you the big dollars. Yeah. Well. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Dan, 
I appreciate your coming. I, I think we're gonna be sharing this video with some of our clients, some of the other people that we work with. And again, here in the middle of 2020, I personally think, um, I wake up in the morning thinking about planning. To me, I think that is just very important. But if you had some recommendations maybe to make to, to business owners or some farmers and ranchers with regard to any of the issues that you get involved in, what would you say? Well, I, I, I think it's to look forward and try to figure out where you see yourself going in the next five, 10 years, and whether that be into retirement or succession planning, all of those things you want to be taking into consideration. In the same time, you're trying to look at, well, what's the tax law is going to be and how will that apply to what my, my goals of that five or 10 year period is. And so it is looking forward to that. When it comes to estate planning, I'm a big believer in getting input from, if you're looking to pass it down to the next generation, getting their input. Do they really want to have the business? Do they really want to be involved? Because uh, you mentioned a client we worked with earlier. We have some, some of the family that is on the farm and ranch that want to stay there. We have others that are living off and so there's different requirements for that. You, you don't want to, and we've talked about this on many occasions, you don't want to force people into business together that don't want to be in business together. And so you got to figure out how you're going to divide that state up. So there's a lot of planning that has to go into those type of things. Yeah. But. Yeah. Well, Dad, I, every day I, I, I want to thank you for working on a team with our office. I think we, Together we can give a better result to the clients than, if I may say so, either of us working alone. Um, and for me, as I start getting more gray hairs, it's just it's more comforting to realize I'm actually doing a good job for these people. I'm really helping them yep. look into the future and do things they might otherwise not do. And that's very much helped by your being on the team. So thank you so much for being on the team and thank you for being with us here today. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate the opportunity. Like I say, I, uh, I, that team is important. I, I think if if we don't have that, none of us are a jack of, you know, have all the answers and getting that legal advice, getting the investment advice, getting insurance advice, getting the tax and accounting advice. I think that's in, it's just crucial for success in a business. Yep. And thank you for this opportunity. You betcha. Well, thank you all for listening. I hope you've gotten a few nuggets out of this. I, I personally have, Dan. Yeah. Thanks so much. Sure thing.